In this video, you will learn about the many different items you need to keep your premium stitched leather footwear looking like this instead of this. From the absolutely mandatory to the exuberantly unnecessary, we will answer questions like, what is the bare minimum you need? What is the difference between conditioner, polish, and wax? How much should you be paying for shoe care products and from where should you buy them? And what shoe care products do you need when you are out and about flying the world on your private jet plane? We're going to start here and end here. For each level, I will show you what items will be in your shoe care kit and how to use them. Shoe trees, shoehorn, horsehair brush, and shoe conditioner. When I got my very first pair of nice shoes, I was on a tight budget, and after spending more than $300 just for one pair, I wasn't exactly in the mood to spend even another dime, and I didn't. I proudly wore my new shoes for about four weeks before realizing they look a little bit dirty and brought them to a cobbler to get them restored. After all, why buy a pair of $300 premium shoes just to let them get dry and dusty? Well, after spending $50 in two months doing that, I quickly realized that it would be far more economical for me just to spend 50 bucks on basic shoe care products and learn to use them because they will do the same thing anyways and last almost forever. And the first of those are shoe trees. Shoe trees preserve the shape of your shoe and mitigate any creasing, wrinkling, and buckling as the shoes get worn out and the sole dries out over time. They prevent moisture buildup in your shoe that could lead to mold while also leaving them smelling fresh and clean. Woodlore makes a good basic shoe tree. Make sure to get the ones with the split expandable toe as these will best be able to conform to and preserve your shoe's original shape. Any wood is fine, though cedar is most common and has a gentle alpine aroma that is pleasant and classic. There's not much functional difference between finished and unfinished finished wood, though if you have pronounced issues with sweating or humidity, you may want to stick with unfinished for a little bit extra moisture absorption. If your unfinished shoe trees ever lose their natural woody scent, just give them a light sanding to restore their freshness. Okay, shoehorn. Quality leather shoes will have an extra layer of stiff leather or leather board in the heel called a heel counter. The counter provides shape and structural integrity to the backside of the shoe. If this is bent or crushed, however, it is irreparable and your shoes will be ruined. A shoehorn will allow you to easily put on your shoe without damaging this counter. And any shoehorn is fine. You don't need to go overboard with this. This one is plastic. You can get metal. If you want something a little more luxurious, you can get actual horn but they all do the same thing. This is a horsehair brush. Horsehair brushes have the perfect balance of softness, density, and traction to distribute blend and shine any conditioner, polish, or wax you apply to your shoes. There's not much diversity here, so any brush from a reputable company will work. Most will be around six inches, and that is the perfect size for general use. This is a luxury handmade brush. We'll talk more about it a little bit later, but any brush you get from a reputable company will run around $20 to $30, and if you're really on a tight budget, a generic one from Amazon for $15 is totally fine. Over time, the leather of your shoes, being a natural material, will dry, causing splitting, stiffness, and faded color. This little jar of shoe conditioner contains a meticulously calculated blend of oils and waxes. The oils will keep your leather conditioned, hydrated, and supple, while the waxes will provide a thin base layer of protection from the elements and a very gentle shine. It looks white, but dries neutral, and therefore may be used with any color of shoes. These four items are fundamental and mandatory. To buy quality stitched leather footwear and not budget to purchase and learn to use these items is much like buying a car and not budgeting for tire and oil changes. Without them, the nice leather shoes you just bought for two to three hundred dollars may be completely unusable in either appearance or structural integrity in as little as eight months. As for how to use these products, the first two are simple. If your feet are not occupying your shoes, your shoe trees should be. If you've been sweating on a hot day or walking in the rain and your shoes are particularly moist, let them air dry for 30 to 60 minutes before putting your shoe trees in just to let out more of that moisture. And always use a shoehorn when putting on your shoes. These are easy, universal rules. For the latter two products, simply use your fingers to rub in small dabs of shoe conditioner all over the uppers of the shoe using firm circular motions. Let rest for 10 minutes, then brush firmly with a horsehair brush to distribute and produce a gentle shine. Always apply a light layer of conditioner when you first buy the shoes. Beyond that, apply conditioner at least twice a year 
year and potentially more often depending on your use and judgment. Use less than you think you need. To give you an idea, a small jar like this should cost $20 to $30 and last you many, many years. And that is also why you should stick with high grade reputable companies like Saphir, Boot Black, Rift H, or Paul Brungard. Do not buy a pair of two, three, four hundred dollar shoes and try to save five bucks on this critical care product. You will regret it. Just get the good stuff. If you wear your shoes just a couple times a month, by using just these four items, the leather uppers of your shoes will last literally decades. And remember, this is preventative care, not repair. If your shoes routinely get to looking dry, crusty, and worn out, you are waiting too long in between conditionings. <laughs> But that covers only the structural integrity of the leather. While conditioner will make sure the color of your shoes always looks fresh, it will not prevent the color itself from naturally fading over time. You will still want to visit a cobbler once every 12 months for a proper cleaning and color restoration, and potentially more often if you wear your shoes frequently. If you truly never want to visit a cobbler again for anything short of a serious repair or resole, this is the level for you. This is well suited for the person who needs to know about shoes, have good shoes, and make sure those shoes look good all the time for their professional life and without going back and forth to a cobbler all the time. To your shoe care kit, you will add upgraded shoe trees, cream polish, and a mild cleanser. Not all shoe trees are alike. Much like shoes themselves, shoe trees have their own spectrum of quality, largely dictated by their shape as their primary function is to preserve the form of the shoe. The better the shoe tree, the better your shoe will hold its shape over time. The next step up will be these or these. They have a more robust form in the heel and toe of the shoe and a higher instep that better fits the overall shape. At this level, you also have proper boot trees that will preserve the actual shaft and collar of your boot. This is where shoe trees start to get expensive. Understand that you will spend at least 10 to 20% of the price of your shoe just on shoe trees alone. This is normal. Cream polish or polish for short. This provides less hydration than conditioner, but includes robust dyes and greater wax content. These waxes provide more protection from scuffing and the elements, while also allowing for an impressive soft shine. Because polish comes in a variety of colors, it is uniquely useful for imparting dye to shoe in a way that is controlled and easy to blend. This means you can actually restore the color of your shoes as they fade. Polish can also be used to mend any discoloration from light scuffs on the sole edge and heel. I suggest using a cloth tube apply polish, this will help avoid any mild discoloration you may get from uneven distribution that can sometimes happen when you use your fingers. And similar to conditioner, don't cheap out on this. One jar will last you years. If you're wearing your shoes daily or multiple times a week, you'll find that on an almost monthly basis, they will accumulate unsightly stains from normal wear and wax buildup from polish retouching. Instead of going to the cobbler every month, use this. A mild cleanser like this will not only mitigate staining, but it will clear any light wax clogging your leather's pores, allowing for conditioner to properly penetrate. There are many mild cleansers out there, and it's hard to go wrong, especially with reputable companies like Saphir and Boot Black. This one by Paul Brungard nicely doubles as a leather conditioner. At this level, you may have multiple pairs of shoes and wear them daily. How frequently you care for them may be entirely up to your discretion. For context though, a specific routine might look something like this. Once every three months, use a lightly damp soft soft cotton cloth to wipe any light dust and debris off your shoe. Apply dabs of cleanser with a fresh cloth and wipe down the entire uppers focusing on areas with staining. Don't go overboard with this or you'll oversaturate the leather. Just do a good once over. Let the shoes rest and dry for 15 minutes. Then, letting rest five minutes in between, apply and horsehair brush both shoe conditioner and shoe polish until you have a clean, vibrant shoe with a soft, glowing shine. If needed, you may also apply and brush polish to the sole edge and heel block. How much polish you use will depend on how much color you'd like to impart, though always apply at least a thin layer for the wax protection and shine. Including rest time, this whole routine should take about 30 to 45 minutes. In between this scheduled maintenance, always feel free to touch up discoloration with more polish. Just make sure you always brush to blend it in evenly. Touch-ups like these you can do in just a couple minutes and are critical to staving off those everyday scuffs and scratches. At this level, you will never have to go to a cobbler for anything other than actual shoe repair or modification. <laughs> or a mirror shine, which is where we get into shoe snob territory. This is where we begin circling the rabbit hole down which you get into shoe repair and modification. This guide is just for shoe care and maintenance, so we won't be getting into patinas, sole finishing, 
gash repair, things of that nature. The theme so far has been on a kit that is practical, minimal, and essential. Those that look at your shoes will think, dang, that guy has good shoes. At this level of shoe care, however, those around you would not be faulted for mistaking your three-year-old well-worn shoes for being brand hecking new. At this level, you are likely someone who has a genuine personal interest in the art of shoemaking and or derives an enjoyment from the process of shoe care itself. I personally find cleaning, polishing, and shining my shoes to be very meditative and relaxing, much like painting or pottery. Up to this point, anyone could easily pick up and use these tools. At and beyond this point, however, you'll want to be familiar and skilled at using shoe care products because some of these items can easily ruin your shoes if you are not careful with them. To your kit, you will add lasted shoe trees, wax, a dedicated shining cloth, a deep cleanser, leather dye, and a sole edge iron. The last of a shoe is the geometric model around which the shoe has been designed. It is literally the exact shape of the shoe. Lasted shoe trees are made identical to this model and are therefore the best option for that primary function of preserving your shoes elegant refined form. These may only be purchased from the shoe manufacturer and only some manufacturers offer them. They are expensive, though if your shoes are over $400, just get them. You will regret not doing so. These middle and upper end premium shoes have a last geometry that is more complex and will not be properly supported by basic shoe trees, which will lead to them deforming significantly over time. Wax. Conditioner, polish, and wax are on a spectrum. Where conditioner hydrates your leather but provides little to no wax protection, and polish does a little bit of both while imparting dye to the shoe, wax provides no hydration but will give you the most robust protection and the ability to get any level of shine all the way up to a mirror gloss. Waxes additionally come in neutral or colored, so you can use them to dye the shoe, though not with as much versatility and effect as polish. Wax may also be applied to the sole edge and heel for additional protection. Any light scuffs will dig into the restorable wax layer as opposed to the leather itself. If you find yourself mirror shining your shoes frequently, you may want to add a mirror wax to your kit. This is simply a more dense, hard, and dry wax formulation. While you can still get a mirror shine from normal wax, mixing in a mirror wax will provide more longevity as the harder wax is more resistant to scuffs and cracking. Dedicated shining cloth. While you can still use a horsehair brush to distribute and softly shine wax in the same way you would polish, it will never get you anything even close to a mirror shine. A dedicated shining cloth is required. This is ideally a 100% cotton fabric, and while a strip of an old t-shirt or rag will work, for a faster, cleaner shine, I suggest using a thicker, plushier fabric like flannel. Because we are now dealing with more substantial waxes, we need a more substantial cleanser. Saphir has the very effective Reno Mat. Once you are in the habit of applying protective wax layers from time to time, wax will build up, get dirty, and clog the leather. This product will be far more effective at clearing those wax layers. It is also adept at removing that notably thick layer of wax used to achieve a mirror shine, and those harder to get stains that a mild cleanser can't. Be warned, this stuff is powerful. While it won't easily strip the base finish off your shoes the way an industrial solvent like acetone might, it will do so if you are aggressive with it. Be gentle and go slow. Leather dye. Okay, this stuff is dangerous. This is straight liquid dye. It will stain your shoes instantly and be almost irreversible even with a deep cleanser. What this means, however, is that it is extremely effective in its use. Most notably and accessibly, I like to use a brown or black dye to revive the color of my sole edge and heel block. While polish works in this regard, leather dye is more efficient and can bring an intense, rich darkness that polish can't. Brushes, daubers, cotton balls, this can be applied in whatever way makes sense for your purpose. Over time, the edge of your sole will begin to physically deteriorate. While you can restore the color and protection with polish and wax, you won't be able to restore that smooth, glossy edge that's a hallmark of brand new, high quality shoes. Unless, you use a sole edge iron. Combined with just a couple layers of wax and some elbow grease, 
this tool will be able to restore those sole edges to that pristine level of finish. This simple tool is the last piece of the puzzle that you need to ensure that your shoes look quite literally brand new for years and years on end. As far as routine goes, at this point, even more so than before, you're likely doing much of this by discretion. Nonetheless, you can still adhere to the routine outlined in the previous level with the addition of adding wax after the polish for increased protection and a more impressive shine. To do this, using your fingers, add one or two layers of wax to the entire uppers of the shoe. Then brush with horsehair until you get a nice medium shine. Do not add more than just one or two layers though, as too much wax on the flexible parts of the shoe will result in cracking and flaking. This will just add another five minutes to your routine. You can add a mirror shine to the toe, heel, and lower edges of the shoe, though outlining how to do that is a bit beyond the scope of this video. This is also a good time to re-dye the sole edge and heel block with leather dye, and then wax and burnish with a sole iron until smooth. Lastly, once every 12 to 18 months, deep clean your shoes with a deep cleanser in the same way you would use a mild cleanser, and recondition, polish, and wax them from scratch. There are great products, and then there are luxury products. All the items we just discussed are great products. They will do what you need them to do. Luxury, however, is not about need. Luxury is about want. While luxury products may have a uniquely specific or slightly superior utility to great products, the value of them is more about the beauty and the craftsmanship behind them. A great product is one that you store in a drawer or closet. A luxury product is one that you showcase on a shelf, table, or display. It is pleasant to look at and serves as a nice talking point for guests. It enriches your life in the same way as a sculpture or painting might. And that is because luxury products have a quality to them that may be described as artful. At this level, you do not merely want your shoes to look pristine week after week, but indeed every second of every minute of every hour of every day. There is no end to the products one might acquire at this level, and your collection may very well rival that of a cord wainer him or herself. If you truly want to go insano mode with your shoe care, some examples of this genre of specialty products include luxury shoe trees, luxury brushes, and a valet box. We have talked about lasted shoe trees, though you may not always be able to get lasted shoe trees. This is where luxury shoe trees come in. Not only will these be milled with far greater detail to mirror the design of high-end contemporary shoes, but they will also have a stunning finish. These ones from Arterton have an oxblood stain and are sealed with a thin layer of carnauba wax, giving it a nice high gloss finish. I am obsessed with these things. These things are freaking beautiful. Have you seen them? Just look at them. Do you see these shoe trees? I would eat an entire onion just to get another pair. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Ah! They also feature this astutely designed hole that allows for airflow to reach and dry the insole of your shoe. Very nice. The superior utility of luxury products may sometimes be described simply as convenience. You see, the thing about a mirror shine is that it must be kept perfect. Even just the slightest scuff or scratch will make it look sloppy and uncared for. But who has the time to break out their entire shoe care mise en place every time you get home from a long day of work? This is where the goat and yak hair brushes come in. These brushes have a far more soft, dense bristle than horsehair and can achieve almost a mirror shine simply from brushing alone. With soft brushes like these, you can buff out those daily imperfections in just a few seconds without compromising your perfect shine. While both goat and yak fulfill this purpose, if you wanted to get both, you could use yak hair specifically for shining and mirror restoration as it has an even finer and denser bristle and use goat hair as a daily quick brush before you leave just to get rid of any lint or closet dust that your shoes may have accumulated. You can do this with horse hair or even a cloth, but it'll ruin anything with more than just a soft shine. Now, almost all brushes you find will be machine tufted, which means the individual tufts of bristles 
are attached by machine. A hallmark of luxury brushes, however, is that they are hand tufted. This is a slower, more laborious process done by a skilled craftsman where the tufts are actually stitched to the handle by hand. It results in a more expensive brush, but also one that has a higher tuft density, which means you get more consistent results when you are either scrubbing or polishing your brush with horsehair or yak or goat. Hand tufted bristles are also more rigorously attached to the brush, which means you'll get far less shedding than you would a machine made brush. This hand tufting process also allows for tufts to be placed far closer to the edge of the handle, which means you get this outward angle here from the bristles, which makes it much, much easier to reach these interior curves and crevices on your shoe that would be difficult to do otherwise. The best way to tell if a brush is hand tufted is to look for this particular seam. A hand tufted brush must have a second piece of wood attached to it in order to protect and cover the stitching. This seam may be more pronounced as is the case here or more blended in with sanding, but it will always be visible. And if it's not visible, it means you have a machine tufted brush. Luxury brushes will also be made with finer materials such as this applicator brush right here. This is made of walnut and it's nice for when you need to apply product to your shoe, but are on the go and don't wanna stain your fingers. Given the scale of your collection at this point, you'll want an orderly place to store all of your shoe care items. This is where the valet box comes in. This will not only serve as a compartmentalized storage space for all of your shoe care items, but also a proud trophy of your entirely degenerative and out of control shoe addiction. There are only a few brands vending this kind of luxury product and they are, as you would expect, companies like Saphir, Boot Black, and Crockett and & Jones. This briefcase though from Paul Brungard is particularly interesting. It is specifically tailored to Paul Brungard items, so it cannot house those from other companies. This sacrifice and versatility, however, is done for the sake of portability because the wood is milled to fit specific items, they're less likely to shake around when you are moving about and traveling with the case. It's uniquely compact and made of this durable, beautifully finished walnut, and also has magnets inside the case that correspond to magnets inside the brushes to make sure they stay in place and don't shake around when moving. <coughs> yeah. So, who might be buying these products? Well. Not me, because I got them for free. Realistically, anyone. There is no gate behind which any of this is kept, and the limit is only your passion for shoe care itself. Maybe a handmade brush is important to you. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is, but not quite $50 important. And that's okay. Specifically though, these kinds of products might be well suited to the traveling businessman. As you circumnavigate the world, visiting exotic places and closing world-changing deals, you will continuously impress those you meet with impossibly pristine shoes made possible only by the accompaniment of your highly portable luxury valet box. But do you know what else will impress? What'll make people look at you and think that man is worldly and sophisticated? Your immaculately designed hand-linked luxury Japanese dress socks. Wait a minute, you're wearing department store socks? With your $400 shoes, your $900 shoes, your $3,000 bespoke shoes? You, sir, deserve better. And that is exactly why I suggest you watch what is the world's most comprehensive and entertaining guide to luxury dress socks right here.